para llegar a esta gran final. Vamos con las semifinales. En el lado azul tenemos al rey del backdoor y el jefe final europeo en este torneo. Mi amigo, tu amigo, el amigo de todo el mundo. ¡Ex y en el otro lado aterrizado en la competición como uno de los favoritos y ha sabido mantener las, expectati las expectativas, perdón, es una leyenda y lo quiere demostrar también en este uno contra uno. Uh, sí. Mucha suerte en la final. Whew. Okay, best of three. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah, exactly. We need to give some space now. Now we're into the serious part of the 1v1 mode. Um, Peke did say he has a couple of champions mm -hmm. uh, prepared. I wonder if he'll wait to use those till after the first game. I mean, he's uh, praying. Or just come right out of the gate with it. He's praying that Nasus is left open. I think that's yeah. your best approach. I mean, if you say you have something special prepared, Nasus has been like on the ban list the entire tournament. I don't know about that being mm -hmm. too special, but uh, yes, the E Max Nasus that a lot of people have been uh, talking up, even building AP uh, for a decent amount of people. We'll see if uh, Pekka is going to use that or if it will be even more spectacular. Yeah. Okay. All right. Looking for a team kill. <laughs> yes. Gotta you, leave your teammates behind. It's a, it's a good problem to have, to not have any of the enemy team left to fight because so many of your teammates have been going far. I mean, as a tactical leader, maybe looking at the future under the assumption that Smeb goes to the finals, maybe expect I should just send Uzi. No! Take a fall! Take a fall. No way! Bend the knee, <laughs> expect <laughs> uh, He would never. Let's see. Let's would. see though. He's get, yeah. You can tell. He's taking it serious. He's getting those 80 carries uh -huh. out of there. That is the first step versus Uzi. He's also in the zone. That face is uh, yeah. I don't know if, uh, oh yeah. That, that's his serious look. The smoldering Spanish eyes. Don't fall in love, Kobe. Exactly. Yeah. He, thankfully, he's not looking at the camera. Yeah. <laughs> he's staring at the screen. That's the only thing preventing us from <laughs> saving everyone. Yeah. <laughs> no giant spoon for expect it. All right. Three 80 carries out on the left side. Mage is banned on the right side. What a surprise. What a surprise. Uzi already hovering more AD carries, though. Uh, yes, there are plenty more for him to choose from. He's like, I got Lucian, I got Kalista. Kennen is actually left open. And that's actually a good pick into AD carries. Really beneficial trade pattern. You know, as Reckless was showing as well, Reckless obviously very close to Peke, and they were practicing a lot. We heard so many rumors about uh -huh. Reckless is waking up early. He's playing 1v1 matches over and over and over. Uh, Let's some more. Get, oh, <laughs> good. You get a B plus for that one. You're moving up to right. Moving up. There was a rise hover. I think that may actually be it for Expeke because it's a really strong champion yeah. into AD carries, and I think Expeke actually has a chance here. I think it's a very. Uh, he definitely has a chance. Uh, I really do like the strategy as well. Uh, bush control pretty easy on this map. I want see to see if you can get over to the side. I want to see almost a cleanse rather than an ignite. Because I feel if, you, if you're rising, you get rid of the um, of the exhaust. Or even you just go for a barrier, dude. It's so There's so much predictable damage inside of barracks. Yeah, I mean, barrier definitely is high value because it's pretty easy to predict a full trade and get the maximum shield's mm -hmm. worth there. Um, but as you're talking about the cleanse, I'm reminded of all these like Darius games where yeah. they're learning like ghost cleanse and stuff. And it's possibility to get multiple value uh, multiple values out of that by cleansing off multiple things. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking it would be pretty good for a the AD carry in this situation as well. To get out of the if you get rune prisoned and exhausted and ignited, and you get the, uh, the three for one on that cleanse, then, then you're riding the struggle bus. Feel pretty good, you know. Probably want to stay away, uh, honestly. One thing I hope we see, and I don't know if they actually practice this in one v one. It seems counterintuitive to skill your ultimate as rise, but we yeah. can't forget oh, yeah, that yeah. you can you can port the minions. You can stand on your minion wave, port it under the enemy turret. <laughs> yeah, we and were deny him a full wave. We were trying to theory craft all of the like oddball things you could do in one v one, besides just straight up, you know, try and kill the other person. Rise teleporting the minions definitely is one of them. We'll see how tricky he does get. All right, Expecta is running his AP armor page, magic pen, flat health, and then 26 ability power. Since he's playing Rise, he's going Makes very sense. heavy on the offense. 12, 18, 0. No Resolve Tree. Not looking for any tankiness. Um, just going pure on damage. 
is going to go for that mage style. Look uh -huh. for the kill, look for the all in. Probably not the CS, but you know, we say that, and he got to see it almost a CS victory previously on Cassiopeia, so. <laughs> I mean, Joe co-owned it a lot, but he's just a fantastic legacy player, so he can definitely... He's a god. Yeah, all around. Yep. What a god. <laughs> one of the more popular players as well. I mean, he, he is one of the oldest... The oldest... The oldest uh, players in the game as well. Wow. Let the crowd take over and catch this one, though. Mm -hmm. Mowing behind him. All right, Uzi getting early access to the wave. Really good E-Trade. That's what you want to do. Hit all the range creeps and your opponent. That all attack cost him a little bit for minion trade, so that's not... Too great from him. He wants just to get the push early. Yeah. Also here from the rise, you want to try and spread that flux. Uh, the ideal situation would be go through minions and then hit Uzi, but Uzi good positioning on the side. Pekka now be able to get both there and just going to try and clean up the CS as Uzi lands a little bit of harassment. It's really hard to CS with rise under turret on this map, so that is definitely something that's going to keep Pekka down. Uzi, he gets level two first. Yeah, at the early level two, he's going to have complete control of this minion wave. And uh, Peke, you know, while it is a little bit not exactly what he wanted, it's it's still fine because his plan is going to be to go for that all-in kill. Mm -hmm. And he's not going to have to worry too much. As long as you get enough CS to be competitive in items after your first purchase. Yeah, definitely. So we're, we're learning about the, the CSing every time one of these melee creeps hits, hits the turret. You think, yeah, it's going to live. Nope. Yeah, Dies different, by different tower damage is actually super annoying. Because these guys are trained uh, thousands of games of League of Legends in turret like, habits. Yeah. Even when small tweaks get made on 5v5, you start struggling. Uzi threatening. Whenever Peke wants to go for a CS, he's eating auto attacks in return, even though he's spell CSing. Yeah. I mean, and you guys talked about before earlier when we saw a bunch of Varus. He's got multiple spells to harass you mm -hmm. in between trying to get CS. So there are a lot of options for Uzi to be going for harassment. Uh, and that's, that's a dangerous thing Uzi did right there. He went for the auto walk out, and as it hits, he's no longer in turret range. If Expected can answer with a snare there, that could spell Uzi's demise if he's not extremely careful. But however, in that harass pattern, he just messed up all his melee creeps again, lose a 3 CS here, so slowly dwindling and falling behind on the side of Expected. Yeah. I mean, he did get a spread there on the spell flux. That's what uh, we were talking about. But every time that happens, he's kind of ruining his own mid lane. Ooh, he's going for the all in really early here. Reduced health for like he barrier is suboptimal. It's Becky backs out. All right. He traded two summoners for one there is the key, though. Even though Xpeke has got him on the ropes, this is the reason why we keep saying, oh, yeah, Uzi, he's so cool in these situations. He's not panicking at all. Mm -hmm. Holds on to the extra summoner. Now he's got exhaust. And that. That, with the Rise looking for an all-in, means Peke pretty much has to wait yep. until both summoners come back off of cooldown. So probably we'll look for him to uh, you know, wait for another purchase and then the second round of double summoners. Yeah, look at Peke. He doesn't want to base because this wave will be fast pushed by Uzi. He knows he can't trade in this massive minion wave versus Exhaust, so he finds himself in a bind. He was hoping that the Ignite healing reduction on that Relic would be enough, but Uzi, so calm. And collected. He just always knows up. Even though the barrier wasn't ideal, he traded it instead of the exhaust. Obviously, the shorter cooldown. Yeah. Now, Pekka looking for a reset on this wave. <laughs> Woo, he did got get there. It. I have to say, I mean, Double have talked about it as well. I mean, as good of a player as you can be, like, you can be a top tier player and still trying to lane against Uzi, especially Uzi knowing there's no junglers available to, uh, yeah, to guy influence in the him. matchup is just. Very intimidating. And you see uh, what he's doing, so we, we, we need just need, need to follow what he's doing exactly. It is stepping forward every time you go for a exactly. CS, stepping backward every time he goes himself for a CS, keeping that sustain up with the Warlords. It's, it's It looks like the steps are so simple for him as well. He's like, step number one, his whole focus was on getting control of the minion wave. Mm -hmm. So he's got a single minion advantage. Yep. He immediately transfers into harassment mode, and he's firing auto shots in between the spell harassment at you to keep you off of the minion wave. So there's almost no chance for you to get control back and doing such a good job. Yeah, and he's approaching level six. Uzi will get a combat um, skill point right there with his ultimate, which is really valuable against the Rise, especially when you get Wound Pizzen, so he can at least walk away from the second part of the engage. Yeah. Peke cannot skill his ultimate, so on level six, there'll be another advantage towards Uzi. Yeah, and I think that Pekse, uh, ex Peke, excuse me, is uh, not still, Stixay. yeah, not Stixay, he's, uh, uh, across the Atlantic, pretty far away. But uh, yeah, Pekka, he's still waiting for the double summoner timer. So mm -hmm. I feel like we have time uh, to remain calm and uh, just wait until he's able to go back for probably another purchase before uh, he goes for the all-in as well. I want to see Pekka hide in the brush, warp to the relic behind Uzi, 
cut off the escape and then go all in, but it may already be time for this one all in that we're waiting for. Testing the waters there, maybe. Uh, they do both have potions, so sustain uh, is definitely there. Yeah, I got a little word there. I was like, yeah, just before like, I say he's going to wait for a double summoners, he goes all in! Now waiting. That's one exhaust down. Uh, so close to the barrier for Uzi. Becca has the kite. He has to dodge the next arrow. Nope. Makes you wonder, Kobe. <laughs> Should he perhaps have waited for these double summoners? And this is the best of three. The way you lose the first game will impact the way you play the next two as well. Did we just see Peke bend the knee, Crepo? Now I'm wondering about other things. Yeah, maybe.